one. <clears throat> How are you? How is everybody? Welcome to Indie Buzz Rocks. This is Bandcamp Friday. Yay! Go to Bandcamp, support your local artist. Anything that you purchase on Bean Camp on Fridays, the whole proceeds go to the um, musicians. So um, go support Bean Camp Friday. Fill up your fill up your earphones with some new local music, or go across the globe. Either or. Today we are celebrating the Birds Lords's and their EP release, Nest Egg. And here's the cover. Mm -hmm. Hi, Erin. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> nice to see you again. I'm just waiting for the Bird Lords to join. Um, we're going to be celebrating Band Camp Friday. So hang on. They should be there any minute. <sighs> How are you doing today, Kiki Mama 1969? Are you related? Are you? Never mind. I get <laughs> we'll just wait quietly <laughs> ah the bird lords have joined yay I'm going to wait I'm going to <laughs> add them Bird Lords is invited to join. Yay. Hi, Kathy. Nice to see you again. How Hi. sweet. Ah, oh, there they are. The adorable oh. Bird Lords is. <laughs> I love you guys. How's How are you? I'm doing great. It's nice to see you. Let me turn on my phone. Yes, it's lovely to see you. How's lovely your day? To see you. My day is going good. How is yours? So far, so good. Yay, um, Friday. Yes, let's start fresh. I know, I get a little nervous. <laughs> welcome. Hi, everybody. My name is Hannah. This is Indie Buzz Rocks. And it's welcome to Bandcamp Friday. Woohoo! Bandcamp Friday. Go to Bandcamp. Find an artist. Support them. All the proceeds go to them on Bandcamp Friday. So please do go. Today's Artists are the Bird Lords, and we are celebrating their EP release. Woo hoo! Yes. Oh, Look at that gorgeous picture. I laid it myself. <laughs> okay, so do tell what is the cover story? How did you come up with the title and the cover? Well, the title, uh, Nest Egg. Uh, what it's the songs are a collection I have uh, ed, I had been playing and so when Mick and I got together um, you know we brought these songs to life with a band and I just thought that it was appropriate it's you know with this little like precious savings that I had in my music and it was you know a nest egg is something to launch your new project your future so this is this is what got us off the ground, got us making music together and, you know, going forward, making other music, which is wonderful. And the uh, album uh, uh, artwork, Mick uh, compiled that for us and we just talked through, we wanted to find something kind of simple and also quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could probably find a version of that image with a Google search. Um... And you know, it was this beautiful blue color, so made that the font color and just kept it simple. I loved it. I Keep it simple. It's beautiful. I love that you, so you, how did the songs come about? You said that it was you, your little nest egg of songs. So how did they come about? Uh, well, I had written them over a number of years, performed them solo. Um, and hadn't really ever been able to perform them with a band. So they, uh, and then with the the song, uh, When I Was the Gollum being the most recent, uh, 
there just a you know an expression of various points in my life transitions challenges things i didn't know what was going on at the time that you know was just coming out of my music that i understood better later but um yeah so i just still had faith and love for these songs and you know they hadn't been heard yet so i didn't think that they should be just you know thrown by the wayside and it's nice that we found a way to uh you know blend the various uh influences and styles that we both have, uh, you know, with this being a launch pad, um, you know, we, we do a lot of, a lot of stuff. So um, it's nice be, because I, what, what you hear on that album is what I can write on the guitar, you know, which is, you know, limited or within like a, a spectrum of story songs and that kind of thing. And I have other songs that I've written that we've been able to bring to life because of mix musicianship you know and he's helped compose the music for it and i had the lyrics so you know we've been able to come together on other songs that didn't necessarily you know that i couldn't play but um so you know it's like i said it's really nice to be able to explore uh this, these stories and these characters and um so i like how so i like that so I was going to ask you that question, how, who played all the instruments? Because um, on your um, live, it's just the two of you. So I was going to ask how the music came about. Uh, well, I was, um, I wrote the songs on guitar. So I was the guitar player. Um, Mick was the bass player. And we had a drummer uh, pre-COVID um, named Justin White, who's fantastic. And uh, Mick still plays with him in other outfits and, uh, but so we recorded with the three of us and then uh, in our home studios and mixed it all, you know, DIY, Mick did a great job for the equipment that we have and, um, you know, basically, you know, intended on a, on a demo, basically. But uh, so all of the other instruments and the background noises uh, that were collected throughout the house. Uh, you know, Mick had a hand in, you know, uh, in basically putting all the layers of extra sounds on the songs. So I would say that that would be. Yeah. He's, yeah, my musician in a box. I, yeah, I didn't recognize that there were some um, home sounds in there. Which songs have those extra sounds? Do you remember? Um, what is I think it's cold Rogue water. Tenet, right? Is it Rogue Tenant? Then I credited the right one. Rogue. Yeah, I, I credit him for yeah. trash can symbol. Yeah. Nice. Nice. We have one of those step ones, and it's up against the refrigerator. So when it gets hit hard, it's like blank. And yeah, it's a great sound. So he sampled that, and <laughs> I think that's about it for home sounds. Yeah. Yeah. So find that. Search that out. And <laughs> If you find the minute and time in the song and you send it to us, you, you'll get a, a, a prize. You'll get a real prize. <laughs> I already got a prize. You guys okay. are my prize today. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, if one of the viewers goes and seeks out the trash can lid symbol, uh, it only happens once in one of the songs. Rogue ten Rogue Tenant, the title track. <laughs> that's, okay. that's what we think. I that's think that's memory. the one. Um, so, but yeah, so you won a copy of Nest Egg because we are in a uh, liking drive right now on Facebook. Uh, we were at 407 likes as of December 1st. Oh, and, that's fabulous. Uh, which is great. Thank you, right. everyone who's liked it <laughs> out there. But if you haven't gone to our Facebook page, right now we are offering a free digital download copy of uh, this CD that we're talking about today, Nest Egg. Um, up to the 420th liker. And the 420th liker will get just a little bit nicer package. <laughs> They'll like win. But everybody who likes up to 420 um, right now will get a copy of uh, Nest Egg on a digital download. So you I go so, do your and type in the comments, type in the comments what number you are. <laughs> oh, yes. I didn't see what number I was. I don't know. I know. I, I saw that you did it and I worked it out. So, um, 
Um, wonderful. Thank you. Well, we'll make sure he does that. Um, would you like to discuss your song titles? You have quite a um, eclect eclectic, is that the correct word? Set of song titles that are very, very distinctive points, I think. Oh, interesting. You like my song Such titles? What's yes. Yeah, okay. like jazz. So how did you come up with the title for Rogue Tenant? <laughs> well, the, the title and the overall song. A lot of times my songs will start with something in my head that amuses me and then becomes like, you know, like a dark and heavy song that then I like try and, you know, make a little more like light. But so I was watching um, a flipping show uh, in, I don't know, 10 years ago uh, on like HGTV. And so they had worked through this entire house up into the attic where this person was residing and refused to leave. So throughout the show, they called this person so many different things. They called him the, you know, uh, they, they, they used all these different terms, which I can't think of right now. Of course. Last thing they said at the end of the show was, well, it's time to evict the rogue tenant. And I was like, rogue tenant. I just thought it was this awesome, it, like, it was funny, it's like rich. And then I just started getting a dialogue um, and just, you know, some imagery from that. Um, it's also like, a, was a potential band name because it kind of like allows people to come in and out around, you know, what I was writing. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Rogue Tenant came from like watching a show and just seeing this funny thing, but then, you know, it ends up. I mean, you know, I so I just got the lyrics up, so you guys can all read the lyrics on the uh, on Bandcamp. But you keep me living in your attic, like your sickly little aunt. Keep me living in your closet where it is very cramped. Keep me living in your hospital. Tell the nurses I'm unclean. Keep me living like a rogue tenant. It's the darndest thing. So it's kind of like a statement about not really being aware of like all of the dynamics or also knowing that you're kind of like, um, you know, put in this isolated situation in, you know, an environment that would otherwise be your home or whatever, you know, which is very much what I was experiencing within myself and around me. So Talk about walls. What's that? In, in the song, you talk about walls, which you were saying you're living in this thing. It also happens in your system. Yeah. Continue. Well, I, if you look through and as we, you know, continue to release more, you see it less live. A lot of my songs are about, um, like I could do an entire album uh, soundtrack for a real estate company <laughs> because I write a lot about homes and how we live and where we live and how we maybe find other um, other types of places or ways to feel like we have a home, even if we're taking it with us. And that seems to be a common theme in a lot of, you know, these story songs that I've written, uh, you know, but they're kind of inspired by like hobos and trains and, you know, just this like kind of traveling, you know, wanderer uh, character framework, you know, so, but yeah. So I that's right. You're saying that you can go in and out. It allows the audience to come in and then you're kind of around and then you can go back out, you know, you're the, you're, and you can transfer it from home to real tangible home to interior home. And I, I find that, that's really cool. Well, we all have lots of layers. So, you know, I didn't necessarily, like I said, I didn't understand everything as I was writing it. I was just trying to write well, you know, and learn more about like my writing process um, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, and as it, you know, became uh, like to a finer point, you know, and then I lived with it for a while, you know, it's like, the layers revealed themselves to me over time. And I got more understanding, became less vulnerable in my performances and more, 
you know, more powerful because I know where, where this is, but also I'm not being affected by it anymore in my life, you know, so I can, I can bring in the emotional state because we all go through these heartaches and these redemptions and, you know, uh, usually like my characters try to find some type of redemp redemption or, or peace within themselves or they're asking for it or, you know, so there's a search and a, a hope, you know, for something good, you know, even if the song's about longing, you know, so. I like that. Very good. Okay. You ready for your another question? Thank you. Which song gives you, um, the most heart pumps to like listen to. <laughs> like, well, if... let's ask Mick. Yeah, Mick. <laughs> well, you know, I haven't listened to the whole thing in a long time. I don't have a car. I don't have a CD player. Uh, uh, what are the songs? Rogue Tenant, Think Tank, Hammond's Folly, When I Was a Golem, and Cold Water Flat. Hammond's Folly is the one that goes, um, got to get on the train at the very yeah. end. Right. Well, I, I yeah, no, I, thanks for, I do remember the song. <laughs> <laughs> I, so sorry. Um, I'd say probably the Gollum song is the one um, that always gets me, and I, I almost didn't even want to play it live because uh, it's, like, too, mu too much. Yes. But I've ended up uh, appreciating its clawingness, uh, you know, and we all have the little beast, selfish beast inside of us. So that that guy can be hard to uh, face or whatever. Uh, I'd say the Gollum song. <laughs> That's my vote. I had to I fight for. I had to fight for the Gollum a little bit. I, yeah, which is I was okay. Not when the guy in the TV, in the movie was a golem, when I was a golem. So that's like you were saying, really getting into your own party that you just don't want to see anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it, and it feels good and it's still cathartic and it's still healing, you know, the actual real life situation every time I perform it and every time I can own, own that um, dark place. You know, and other people have in, enjoyed it. It's you know uh, the you and he were what? buddies. <laughs> yes, we were. He's quoting something else. Dark place. Dark place. Uh, but so I would say, like all of them, because I hadn't ever heard them um, play with a full band back. You know, the first time we listened to them, like all of them. It was um, amazing uh, for me and so thrilling. Uh, but when I heard the Gollum, uh, that would be the one where it really like everything that had happened and this whole process of being disconnected from it and playing it through a song, like, it, like I, we were in the car listening to it and there was no getting away from it. And, uh, you know, it had everything that I needed it to have in it for myself, you know, and so the hope always is that it, you know, any of the music that we do, whether it's light or heavy, um, you know, that it, it reaches somebody, you know, in, in a place that's like a little bit healing, a little bit, uh, you know, transformative and, um, and we're mindful of that, you know, we want to put good, things into people, you know, that we're putting out of us. So the intention isn't, you know, to like put this monster out and have everybody like, you know, be like, oh, it's okay to be a monster, but it is okay to acknowledge that we have these, you know, times where we're dark. And if we ignore them, um, then we usually get more, have more suffering and we get into more trouble. But, you know, we can say what, what, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> what do you want me to know right now? Because you're freaking me out a little bit. You know, we can try and have a conversation with it. Like, that's important. So this is an experience where I, I, I faced what I had to and, you know, continue to. And now I'm sharing it. Well, that's very brave of you. It's very brave of you to be able to share that. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, 
Are you ready? Okay, here's the next question. What is one of the highest high lyrics? On this particular album, um, well, I really love Hammond's Folly. Uh, okay, so the, I guess the second verse, um, oh, the oily at the gaslight, paid a dollar on a good night, got royal Indian blood in my veins. Um, that I, I like that I read uh, the unauthorized Bob Dylan biography. And so I had a lot of the things that he had said and I had his voice in my head as I was writing the song. I actually was in Paris and started writing two songs about um, Bob while I was there by myself in the misty streets with my baguette and my notebook. But um, so I, I love words and I love language. So, um, you know, it's, it's fun for me. Like, uh, there's a certain like lexicon and, you know, these characters and symbols and stuff that, uh, that came out in that song, you know? So, uh, it's like, we're hearing him talk, but we're also talking to him, you know, if you never rode in a boxcar, get your jacket and a postcard. You know, it was like <laughs> some form of that line was in this autobiography. And I just imagined if he hadn't, you know, if he never got on that train, like if he just stayed in Minnesota, I think, you know, and, and we never got the benefit of his music. And that's why it's called Hammond's Folly, because John Hammond, his producer, you know, people, that's what they called Bob Dylan, Hammond's Folly. Like they were like, this guy, you know, this kid is, got nothing and you know John Hammond you're crazy so you know that he took that gamble um there if you listen if you read through it and you know Bob's story you know like there's just all sorts of stuff in there so the Royal Indian blood in my veins he, I wrote that in like 2001 and then a couple of years later uh in his subsequent releases he had a couple really really good albums uh, but i was listening to one of the songs and he's like got raw indian blood in my veins and i'm like no shit like i wrote that first and i had to like go back and and find my notes and like but there's you know it's a fun song i like it <laughs> I like that it's connected to him and he picked up on it i mean or what there. like you know like none, sorry continue that's okay none of it's exclusive to any of us you know it's like whoever has like the portal opened over them in that moment you know and it like and goes with it you know is the one that's going to bring it out and there's probably yeah you know, i mean any number of different spins on on that kind of thing but uh, you know that was my take and I cannot say whether or not I wrote the line first or he did. I, I really don't know for sure. Uh, but I loved that when I wrote it, I didn't know I got it from what, how he talked about himself in the autobiography. You know, so he may have been talking about himself like that, but not put it into a song until later. Correct. But, Correct. but he's got Royal Indian blood in his veins and supposedly so do I. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> There you go, beautiful. Um, what about you, Mick? Is there a highest high lyric? Are you? Well, really I was gonna say exactly what she said. I, I was gonna say, say that it too. Exactly the same way she said it. I'm <laughs> at a loss here. I got the lowest low though. Perfect. That's the next question. Is it? Yes. It's the mine, 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 mine. Mine, mine. Okay. Oh, right there. Yeah, in yeah. the golem. Yeah, that would be my lowest low. Yes. That one I gets me. It like claws. Oh. Again. Sorry. What? Mine, mine. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. Which that went from? That's from um, Think Tank? Which was the Gollum. Oh, that's the Gollum one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the one he. And why is that low lyric? I got to do the hand thing too every time I got to do it. Yeah. I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
seriously. <laughs> no. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> I, so, so the thing about uh, this particular, you know, EP is that uh, all of the lyrics were written by me, you know, so uh, Mick has experienced them and he plays with them. But what I would be interested in hearing is what, what song or what bass line, what piece of music from this Crap. would you say like is the funnest for you to play? Because that would be the thing, you know, like he played a part of this song that never existed before. Um, that I would imagine would be something if I had talked to him about it yesterday, he'd be able to talk about real good today. Maybe. I would love to know. That's my next That's question. Well, I mean, okay, the, what popped into my head? That's your next question now. <laughs> <laughs> the song Broke Tenon is a fun song to play on the bass. It's very really? bouncy. Yeah, it bounces a lot. He's got good moves. Oh, and, um, uh, Cold Water Flat, too. I like playing that. Those two. Um, um, is there a certain um, set of notes that you that that um, that you remember that bring you to that lowest low or to is or to that highest high when you hit it? Like how it goes exactly? Well, well, you want the notes? <laughs> <laughs> the um, think tank. Sorry, is the lowest low. The, the think song think tank has has a lot of juice in it, a lot of, a lot of power. It gets grainy. Um, yeah. And okay. Gollum. <laughs> and, oh, that's not on there. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared. Like, to send any special thank yous and shout outs to people or for the album? Besides Thanks, Justin, for letting us record in your attic and playing such cool drums on the songs that you didn't really know at the time. Thanks, Justin. That's Aww, one. shout out. That's one. Um, so, yes. Thanks to Eugene Barna for introducing us to me and Justin to play, and then we went to Taos, and then we met Micah Yost. And Radio all. Venice, <laughs> Ray Stanton. We didn't meet Ray then. It's a long Yay. story. That's Ray. Hi, Ray. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody in Venice uh, definitely likes to send a lot of love to you guys out there. But um, yeah, we uh, appreciate uh, we've been, uh, we've got some shows going here in Tucson, and uh, starting to, you know, people are starting to get familiar with us and uh, coming out. And so that's really nice to be playing again. And uh, we're playing tomorrow in Tucson uh, at a uh, kind of an open air pop up uh, park event with a group called the Hatpin Duo. And that's at uh, between three and five o'clock at Himmel Park. You can check out our Facebook page um, for information on that. And uh, Revel Wine Bar, January or December 10th, for their big annual Sagittarius birthday party bash. And then I'm going to see those in January. But really hoping to be able to come out to California again and set yes. some stuff 
uh, at least by the spring. But uh, yeah, right now, just want to share the music. And we, hi, Ray. There she is. I see if she joined. Um, yeah, we would like people to, you know, check out the uh, CD. And like I said, if you like us on Facebook, on the Bird Lords page, uh, now through number 420, you will receive a free digital download of the album we've discussed today. Um, but if you want to buy it today, all the proceeds hey. go to the band. Go to the band. band. Okay. Yes. But definitely go to our page and like us. Yes. Because we go to their Facebook page and their YouTube page and check out their videos. They have amazing videos. I wanted to ask you, are you working on any upcoming projects besides your shows? Do you have any other video projects that you're working on? Well, we're certainly talking through the uh, next video option uh, and we're narrowing it down. So stay Good. tuned. <laughs> Good. Do stay tuned. We are, uh, we have been recording um, in general. We've released uh, Free Love you know, as, as a video. Uh, we've released um, Dream Dancer as a video, but we haven't, uh, we have this collection of songs that we haven't put together on a, you know, an EP or a full length album. So we will be continuing to finish that up. And hopefully by the end of January, by my birthday, we'll be able to, you know, have a new release uh, with, you know, some of the things, you know, people have heard, but um, yeah, so that will be called Being About It. Oh, and, good. Look yeah. forward to that. So um, we'll definitely let you know when that happens and we'll give you, you know, an exclusive or, you know, the raise there. So it depends. Depends on who gets to us first, but we'll interview with you over it. And thank you. This is awesome. I like your little Bandcamp Friday highlight. Thank you. I loved your poster. I have two. Well, the pre one more question for you, if you have time. Uh, what are three words to describe your album? Okay. A toe tap and triumph. Ooh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Toes happening triumph. I would like, I agree to that. Very well. Yeah, Maybe it'll make you your toes. I can't top that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions I forgot to ask? I wanted to play some songs, but I wasn't sure. So I don't know if there's FCC regulations on here or not. I haven't figured that out. Well, I mean, we, you know, if you're interviewing with us, you have permission to play, but uh, we could just play one. Oh, yeah. You. That would be great. Yeah. I love sure. that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll give you a little sample. Me, 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 him, him, him. Baby, 
Thank you for coming and sharing. I like your how you've put everything together so beautiful. I love that you've created the nest egg from your heart and soul and how you've really gone in there and try got yourself out of those positions, tried to get yourself out of those positions that were Dim yeah, diminishing. So Woo! Hey. <laughs> Well, we love you, Hannah. We Thank you so much. Hi, hey, hey. 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 We're celebrating. Uh, the uh, sorry. sorry, I was talking over you, babe. You go. Oh, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody that it has joined. I was paying attention to Hannah and not the name scrolling, but it's nice to see uh, so many, so many great people out there. Coming to say hello. We love it. Check yes. out the bird log you. on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube, and on Bandcamp in particular today. Today's Bandcamp, yes. <laughs> and definitely go to their YouTube page, The Bird Lords, as you will love their video. Christmas time coming up, and they have a beautiful Christmas special video up there. So I won't spoil the surprise. <laughs> go oh. watch it. Love them. You're going to love They're them. If there's one thing we know about Christmas, it's special with you. <laughs> yeah, check out our Christmas special. <laughs> it's gonna be special with you. Is that in your video? Did I just mess that up? <laughs> yeah, it's in there. <laughs> uh, exactly. So. Sorry so. about that. I was like, what? With me? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. 
Um, okay, thank you so much for coming and celebrating your EP release. Yay, you sure. Paige. I love you guys so much. You're precious. I want to. You're wonderful. You. I thank look you. To it. Any. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bird larges. I know. <laughs>